key to the ladies, keys to the saints, we place in a baby. We in control, even in the AM, we should be alone, we can get a thing. Hey guys, Tezia and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be telling you guys how I downgraded my lifestyle so that I would feel more comfortable and more secure in my finances. These are just some of the tips that I've incorporated into my life to just help me feel a little bit more secure and manage a little bit better. So before we get started don't forget to grab your cup of tea to have with Tez and let's jump right in. So the first thing that I did to downgrade my lifestyle was to get rid of my Mercedes A-Class. Now girl, when I tell you this was a really difficult decision for me because I was obsessed, still am, but really obsessed with that car. I loved it, it drove really well, it was a 2 litre petrol AMG 4 wheel drive automatic and it, it drove fast, it was really nice and I loved it, but it cost me so much money every month so that was a chunk of my wage that was going away before I'd even got to it. Now this did include the insurance so it wasn't too bad, but I then had to buy fuel for the car and because I used to drive it in sport mode because why would you own such a car to drive it in eco, like it don't make sense. Um, but I was spending a lot of money, like about £60 a week on petrol and this was a couple of years ago which now I guess would be close to 100 really if I compared it to the cost of living today. And now I drive a Corsa which I paid a one time fee for and all I have to do is top it up for fuel. So I actually pay less fuel, pay like £60 will last me two weeks whereas before £60 was lasting me a week if I'm lucky. The second thing I did was not borrowing the maximum amount of money that the bank would lend me. So usually when you're buying a house, the bank will lend you 4.5 times your salary and I earned 45,876 or thereabouts, um, which means that if I multiply that by 4.5, that would be about 206,000 that I could borrow from the bank and instead I borrowed £125,000. Now the reason I did that is because if you borrow the maximum that you can, that means you can just about afford to pay your bills, including the mortgage, get food and pay for expenses and you have nothing left, which means you wouldn't be able to save and with the cost of living increasing, you always need to make sure that if possible, you have some money at the side just in case there's an emergency. So for me, it was really important to make sure that I was in overstretching myself and I couldn't just afford this house, which is why I decided to get a cheaper house in a maybe less affluent area. But this was my first house and I'm happy with it. So I just think if you have the option, maybe don't borrow the maximum that the bank will lend you just so you have that little bit extra in case of an emergency or if you want to go on holiday or do up the house. The third thing I did was to close my overdraft. Now, when I was in university, um, if you get a student account, usually that comes with an overdraft that for some reason increases every year. So I think in the first year I had a grand and then in the second year too. So it was increasing every year that I, I had that account and I was in university. So by the time I graduated, I had a £5,000 overdraft as a student, which I just think is a recipe for disaster. Luckily, I was able to close that within a few months of me starting work. And now my current account uh, bank is also trying to encourage me to get an overdraft because the rates are so good. But I just think that's a whole kind of worms that I am not prepared to open. So I don't have an overdraft. Once I'm, I've run out of money, that's it, I have to stay at home. So which is why it was important to make sure that all my bills are paid. And I can always, I always have like dry food. So if even if I was super desperate, I could make pasta with like, like a tuna and sweet corn pasta, for example, because I always have pasta, always have tuna, always have sweet corn. So things like, unless there was a real emergency, Realistically, I don't need that overdraft, so just closing it and not giving myself the option has been really good for me because it's just one less thing to worry about or thinking I have money when really it's not mine. Another way that I've downgraded my lifestyle was not really by choice. So recently, my phone broke. Because of that, I didn't have a smartphone. 
and honestly initially I thought I could just survive with like a Nokia which you can call and text on and uh, not internet access it's like a backup phone that I had ages ago but I soon realized that it's really difficult especially in this digital age like I couldn't access Google Maps I went to mass I couldn't pay for parking because I needed the app so I had to call and all these things that we take for granted with our phones I suddenly I couldn't access them like lots of people text me on whatsapp I couldn't access my emails or anything so I decided that I did need a new phone but when you look at the new phones nowadays everything's just really expensive like when you look at the iPhone 13 for example that's more than a grand even the Samsung phones are really expensive Google Pixel all these companies all their phones because they have so much more technology packed in them and they need to make money from all the technology that they've invested it ends up making the phones really expensive and I just didn't have it in me to spend that amount of money on a phone in May. So what I done is I went to a local trading shop kind of, so second hand, and I traded in some old technology that I wasn't using anymore, so my old tablet, and they gave me a phone, so it ended up working out that I spent £40 or something like that. And that phone, I'm not going to lie, it's not the best phone, it's really annoying, very slow compared to my old phone, but I just thought I need a phone that I can text, call, use WhatsApp, Google Maps, and maybe music, and everything else is a luxury. Whereas before, I would have been that person that once my phone's broken, I'm walking into the Apple shop and I'm buying whatever the latest Pro Max is. So now I'm just thinking a little bit more before I make certain purchases. Another way of downgrading your lifestyle is reducing the amount of times you eat out or order takeaways. So before, I think, I'm not really a takeaway person because I just think if I'm at home, I'd rather just eat whatever's in the house or go out to eat because then the food's nice, it's warm and it's so probably with other people around so it's more like a shared experience. But now I've limited how much I do that. I have a monthly budget on how much money I can spend a month on going out with my friends for example. So once I reach that budget, I don't go out. So it makes me prioritise what people I want to spend my time with and how much money I want to spend with those people. So for example, if anyone's just saying, do you wanna go for dinner? and it's somebody that I haven't seen in ages or maybe we have a rocky situation, then realistically I'm like, oh, can we grab coffee instead? Because you're still going out, but it's a lot cheaper than going out for dinner. And it means that you can start to build on that relationship more before you decide to spend so much money with that person. I know that might be a really bad way of looking at it, but if you earn so much money, you can't afford to just be going out for dinner with everybody who wants to go out for dinner with you. Sometimes that person might not even want to go for dinner with you, they just want to go to dinner with somebody and you are the free person. So I feel like before I used to feel bad saying no, whereas now I'm just like, no, I can't. Because at the end of the day, I have to think about my bills and I've got food at home. If they really cared, sometimes I'll be like, oh, do you want to come to my house and I'll make dinner? Or we can go to the park where it's free. So things like that, just so that I'm not spending so much money and ending up in a situation where I can't afford to pay for essential things like my mortgage. A good habit that I developed earlier on but I'm still continuing to do is not funding my lifestyle with debt. Now, um, I know, like I mentioned before, I don't have an overdraft, but I also, I have two credit cards, I'm not gonna lie. So one is for my daily shop. Like I mentioned before, I use a credit card for all my regular shopping because then I can collect points and spend those points in like Amazon, for example. But I also have another one for emergencies. Now that one is maybe if something catastrophic happened and I needed money straight away, then even though it would not be in the ideal situation, at least I know I have that card to spend. And I also occasionally use it when I'm buying flights because that way I'm protected if something happens with the trip, for example. But I always pay back straight away. A lot of people nowadays fund their lifestyle with debt like Klarna, PayPal, overdrafts. And I just think you're just spending money that you don't already have. So let's say you lost your job today and you have all these things on credit. Like you have your car that you pay monthly for. You have your Klarna for your clothes from PLT or ASOS or whatever. You have something else on PayPal. You have your overdraft. You have your credit card and all these other things that you've taken out on credit. Would you be able to pay those things back? 
is what I always think. And I think the more you have, the harder it is to keep track of it. So just to help me and keep track of my finances, I don't buy things on credit. And I just, if I can't afford it, then I don't buy it or I save up for it. And I just think it's a simpler way of living because it's less stress because you're not thinking, oh, I better not lose my job because how am I going to survive type of thing. I think as well, if you're an emotional spender, it's probably better not to have things like credit cards and overdrafts because whenever you have a bad day, you're probably going to end up buying something and it will just keep adding on. Because I think sometimes even when it's like 0% interest for three months, that three months will soon come and it's not like the following months, you're not going to be buying stuff, you're still going to be buying stuff. So you'll always be in an endless cycle. Another thing that I've done is stopping my HelloFresh subscription. Now I'm not a vegetarian anymore but I don't cook or eat meat at home and I usually only eat it when I go to someone's house and they make it for me or if I go out for dinner and I feel like buying the veggie option is a waste of my money. So buying HelloFresh which was like £11 per meal and you get three, so like £33 a week for some veg, I just thought I could buy that from like Aldi or Sainsbury's or something and it would be a lot cheaper. So I have stopped that. I did like their meals, but I do feel like I've kept enough of the recipes that if I ever wanted to replicate any of them, I could. And I just think like, I live alone, it's unnecessary. I don't cook every day anyway. I could literally buy, for 11 pounds, I could batch cook a meal that will last me for like the four days that I go to work for lunches for example and then sort something out for dinner that kind of thing so I just felt like a waste of money so that's another thing that I've stopped. I've another thing that I've done is downgrading my skincare routine. My skincare routine was never that extravagant anyway but I usually just wash it my face like everybody else does and then I use like a tonic and then a moisturiser but I just I didn't feel that the tonic was really doing anything for me and the moisturiser that I used to buy was quite expensive I think it was £15 for a really small tub so I just decided to go for a cheaper option that lasts a lot longer and is as effective in my opinion. I'm quite lucky in that my skin is a little bit dry but I'm very I guess free from acne and all these things so I don't need to do a lot really. I do still use like sun protection when I leave the house because it is important. A good thing is to not try to keep up with the Joneses so I think in terms of like whether that's tech which I when it comes to technology, I don't really feel like I'm trying to keep up with the Joneses. It is something that I like and I like to invest my money on. But for example, my house is quite simple. There's not a lot of decor in there. It's mainly just plants because for me, decorating my house with lots of trinkets, it just creates more things for me to clean. So simpler for me is better. So I think my house is quite minimalistic in that sense. The last thing that I've done to downgrade my lifestyle is to have a low buy year. Now, um, a low buy year is basically in a simple way where you stop buying things that you don't need and try to live a more simplistic and minimalistic life. And I will be talking that in a separate video because it is quite a lot to talk about and I just wanna make sure that I touch on all the points. But uh, yeah, those are basically the 10 things or 10 steps that I've taken to downgrade my lifestyle. I guess as well, there's always this thing that or oh, the more money you earn, the more money you have to spend. So for example, like I think when I was in what pre-reg, I earned less money, but I still had more money left over because now I earn more, so I spend more and I have less at the end of the month. But I don't need to shop in M&S or Sainsbury's. I can still shop in Aldi if the stuff is good. Anyways guys, that was the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave in the comments any tips you have if you're planning on downgrading your lifestyle or how you've already done so. Don't forget to tap the like button so the video reaches more people. Subscribe if you haven't already because it really helps me out. And until next time, bye for now.